Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us for our solutions for remote collaboration and design and manufacturing. This is our weekly Q&A. So uh, if you happen to miss our very first webinar that we did uh, two weeks ago, uh, we'll be sure to make sure that you get all of uh, the appropriate links so you can watch those recordings uh, as well as this recording. Uh, this is gonna be more of a higher level review of what we covered in that very first webinar. That was a bit of a deeper dive into a little bit of everything. Um, so we're going to cover each topic relatively quickly, and then we have a deeper dive at the end into uh, what's called Project Sync. So, uh, so that'll be today's kind of deeper topic. Uh, so as usual, please ask questions uh, as we're going. You can see all the different names here uh, that we have on the screen. These are all of our experts um, across uh, multiple disciplines here at Autodesk. Uh, they're there to answer your questions whether it's a question about what we're talking about on the screen, or if you just have a general question about licensing, installation, uh, fusion lifecycle, vault, vault professional, whatever it happens to be, just ask those questions uh, in the Q and A uh, panel, and we will be sure to answer them as we go. We will have time for Q and A at the end. Just a few webinar, um, things to keep in mind. Uh, you are all in listen-only mode, so if you do have questions, uh, again, use that question panel. Uh, if you have questions connecting, uh, the easiest thing to do is disconnect and reconnect, and you may need to connect with uh, either a phone dial-in uh, or if the computer audio is not working. Uh, again, keep in mind, this is going to be recorded. You will all get the links. So with that, uh, let's get started. My name is Luke Mahelsik. I am a technical marketing manager here at Autodesk. And one of the very first things we're going to do is just really quickly talk about how we get access to uh, our software. So uh, the easiest way to get access to your software is through manage.org. Uh, autodesk.com. So uh, if you happen to um, have never been there before, pretty easy address to get to. And what's going to happen here is this is where you're going to access, whoop, went a little too far too fast. Uh, this is where you're going to access all of the different versions uh, of the software that you have access to. So you're going to be able to download uh, previous versions if you happen to be on previous versions. Um, this is the easiest, best way to get access, uh, and you can do pretty much anything here. You can, uh, you know, manage your profile, uh, products, uh, CAD administrators can manage their users, uh, and also take care of any payments that you might uh, need to deal with. Uh, the resources here, uh, there is an entire uh, admin.autodesk community. Uh, this is where there's tons of video and content on AKN for installation, licensing. Uh, the idea boards are here, so if you have any comments or specific questions, you can go on to uh, the ideas for the different products uh, and, and get some of those questions out there to have, again, the experts here at Autodesk and folks in the Expert Elite program uh, help you get your um, questions answered. Uh, so again, make sure you check out uh, manage.autodesk.com and make sure you check out that admin community if you happen to be uh, an admin. Uh, the other thing we want to mention is, you know, maybe you're in a situation where you don't currently have access to, uh, let's say, like the product design and manufacturing collection, uh, and you're running maybe uh, some uh, some products on, on maintenance, maybe you don't have any cloud-connected products, and you're looking for some cloud-connected options. Uh, our extended access program runs until uh, May 30th, 2020. So this is uh, free for commercial use. There's no restrictions on any of this. So this is gonna be things like Fusion Team, Fusion 360, uh, AutoCAD Web and Mobile. Um, so this is gonna allow you to collaborate uh, in the cloud, um, kind of taking down some of those barriers where if you're at home working and you're trying to share things back and forth, uh, this is a really great way to collaborate. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, some of these topics uh, in, in today's presentation. Again, just more of a high level overview, uh, but make sure you check out that extended access program. Uh, again, if you don't already have access uh, to these tools. 
So I'm going to pass things over uh, to Rainer now. He is going to walk us through some of the home use license uh, and some of our virtualization tools. So off to you, Rainer. And you may be on mute. Anton, can you check if yeah. he is available? Looks like he's... Yeah, it looks like uh, he's experiencing uh, challenges with audio. So let me cover this section really quickly. I, so I we can have take us... care of it if you'd like me to. Okay, I've, go ahead. I've, I've practiced, Anton. This is this is this is what we're supposed to do, right? Be, be there for each other when we need help. Okay, so. Um, so let's talk about home uh, use license. So, uh, so home use license. If you are a a single uh, user license, if you're on subscription, again, the easiest way is to go to uh, manage.autodesk.com, log in, and basically it activates with you uh, just logging in uh, and connecting uh, with your ID. Uh, so maintenance plans, uh, there is a second installation and activation with each license of software is allowed for home use. So uh, you, you do need to, uh, you can get two of those. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, if you happen to be using uh, a multi-user or a network license, uh, probably the easiest way is with a VPN connection back to your home network. Uh, so it can serve out that license. Uh, you can borrow a license. You may be in a situation where you're already at home and that might be a little more difficult to do. So the VPN is ideal, but if you can get into the office, if you don't have VPN, you can borrow a license. Um, and then you can also check out um, the information on home use uh, license for a multi-user license option. Uh, if you happen to be one of our EBA uh, customers, uh, so you're running uh, something uh, on Token Flex Enterprise, uh, VPN, again, probably the easiest way to connect if you have access to your, uh, your, your VPN uh, and tokens are consumed uh, just the way they normally are. Um, you can borrow a license if you um, are on one of those token flex uh, EBAs. Um, these are consumed uh, until the license is returned whenever it's borrowed. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, that it'll it'll keep on using those tokens uh, for for each one of those until that that date is reached for what the borrowing time was, or you can have this hosted up on some type of uh, public facing server, um, and you can see uh, the ones listed there. So lots of options for getting access to your software uh, while you are at home. Uh, the next thing we want to talk about is uh, virtualization. So. This is uh, another way you can run your software. Uh, so, uh, so what can be virtualized? Uh, so not all products can be virtualized. And, and just to give you an idea, virtualization is basically whenever you have a computer at your office that's actually running the software, if you've never heard of virtualization before, and you're just kind of connecting to that computer and running it remotely, essentially. Uh, so any software that is single user subscription, uh, software under EBAs, uh, server-based components, so think of Vault Server, uh, and your network license manager. These can all be uh, virtualized. So what cannot be virtualized? If you are running a multi-user subscription, they cannot. Or if you are under a maintenance plan, uh, these also cannot uh, be virtualized. Uh, we always get the question, uh, which vir virtualization solution i uh, say that 10 times really fast. Uh, which virtualization solution can we recommend? Uh, we, we don't necessarily recommend a specific platform. Uh, you can look at all of the different virtualization options. Uh, the biggest thing is to just make sure you check your system requirements um, and make sure uh, that it's gonna work with uh, all of the things you are connected to. Uh, there is an AKN article that specifically has some best practices for virtualization. Uh, I believe Anton is in the background, probably uh, dropping some of those links into the chat. So make sure you folks check out the chat window. So anything we mention that is a link or that you see as a link during today's presentation, make sure you look at the chat window because all of the links for those articles uh, are gonna be listed there. 
And the next thing we're going to talk about is Vault Remote Access. And I'd like to introduce uh, Brian Shannon. He is going to walk us through this, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. Brian, off to you. Hey, thanks, Luke. Uh, all right, so we're going to talk about options. If you're using any one of the additions of Autodesk Vault, what you can do and what you can expect. So first of all, let's talk about VPN. We just brought up VPN a few slides ago. And VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. And it's a way that you can remotely uh, log in and get access to your company's network. And it's uh, pretty common out there. There are a number of different vendors. In fact, in the chat window right now, I'm sending you a best practice. Um, watching the questions that go by with these weekly webinars, people ask, uh, that's great, but how do I optimize it? How do I make the most of uh, VPN? So it's in there. It's, it's um, So if you're an end user, uh, share this with your uh, your manager or your IT if they don't know you know how to tune it, how to set it up, because there are uh, things in there to consider about um, the, the VPN usage and performance optimization, um, all the you know uh, ensuring that you know like the DHCP scopes are able to handle a certain threshold. All the, so if you really want to nerd out on that, um, take a look at that link right there. It'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Because whether you're using Vault or you're just using software, and you need to get to your company's network. This will help you out. The second option, virtualization. It's just like being there, but you're not there. So there are a couple of options out there. And with Vault, it's pretty popular to virtualize the server. Vault is a uh, client server application, whereas the client, you with your design tools, uh, and then the server is the thing that holds Microsoft SQL Server. That's where the file store is, the databases. It's popular to virtualize that. There are a number of different platforms out there. There's even ways that you can cloud host, which is the third option. So um, take a look at that. We have also uh, related to that article on Autodesk Knowledge Network or AKN, how to make the most of desktop virtualization, how to handle the graphics, because a lot of things come into play when you're running software like um, Inventor and Revit and, and other things in the collection. There are things that you'd wanna do in the virtual environment to give you the best performance. So it's just like being there, but you're not there. Uh, third option, cloud hosting, also very popular. Um, cloud hosting and desktop virtualization go together. Cloud hosting means, can we just put uh, this server rather than buy a, a physical server, a blade server, set it up in a, in a room somewhere, can we just have it hosted on Amazon, Azure? And there are other options out there. Good news is we've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. So you can actually go and look at an AKN article and look at sizing, optimization, what kind of speeds do you want? What, what are the things to consider? What operating system, what platform? And uh, between all of this though, that absolutely works. So it's a great way to work with Vault, actually it's a good way to work with Vault uh, even going forward. So in a year from now, you, you might find that you wanna get off of a physical server and onto a hosted solution. And then the fourth option, we're gonna deep dive on this today, but this is all about cloud collaboration. There are tools that you may already have access to. And I'm talking about shared views and fusion team, along with desktop connector. There are cloud collaboration tools that are there that are uh, available from Autodesk. Um, Part of our extended access program includes Fusion Team. And Fusion Team is might just be that thing. If you don't have virtualization, you don't have VPN, this is something that you can use without all of the, the first three things on here. And so we'll take a look at these um, uh, step by step. The good news is with the Fusion Team, we actually have a, a deep dive and some videos. So we're gonna walk through exactly how to do that. So stay tuned. So VPN, again, consider the, uh, the speed the file transfer. Uh, when using Vault, you have things like um, the option to enable file compression that'll speed things up with Vault a little bit. When you are using Vault, one of the considerations um, is to uh, go in and get or basically uh, check out what you'll be working on that day. Take a uh, you know take a, a big armful of files and everything, and then get that to your machine if your VPN connection uh, isn't like it is uh, when you're at work. So. Uh, you'll see down there on the bottom using Vault remotely virtualization best practices. The good news is we have it. We have um, not only internally at Autodesk, but we've had resellers set this up and work with customers. So if you are working with a VAR value added reseller, uh, talk to them about this. They, they've they probably been there and uh, um, have some expertise. Next slide. All right, so something that you might have in the box, if you are a subscriber to the collection, uh, let's talk about shared views. Now, shared views takes the place of 
the uh, you know manually going and screen capturing or ripping off a PDF and sending it an email to somebody. The idea of a shared view is right from within your application, be it Vault, be it Inventor, be it AutoCAD, you have the ability to say, okay, I need some feedback quickly on this. And you don't have to uh, you know, stop and do a bunch of other things right inside and we'll say in Canvas. You have the ability to say, I wanna share this. And it puts a temporary version of this, but it's not the actual CAD file, it's just the image. If it's a 3D, it's just like having it, but you don't really have to know anything about Inventor or AutoCAD. You can share it with your customer, your supplier, your whoever you're collaborating with on the outside. So take a look at this. The idea is you take it, you share it, they see it in a web browser. So you send them the link, they open it up, they can see properties if you want. You, you have the ability to tune that if you want. But the advantage here is you can collaborate. There is a correspondence that goes back and forth with chat. It's a zero install. It's it's a it's a good way of uh, making sure that everyone's on the same page before you complete any design. Next up. All right, Fusion Team uh, mentioned earlier. This is part of the Extended Access Program. Fusion Team takes that idea of shared view further. Shared or uh, the Fusion Team is technically a hub. Now, if you are a subscriber of Product Design Collection. You may already have this. If you are um, a subscriber of Fusion 360, you may already have this. And if you are um, want to get your hands on this, check out the Extended Access program in the link earlier. This will give you access to upload your 2D and 3D models. And all you do is actually just work with Windows Explorer, work with uh, Inventor, work with Windows Explorer through a tool called Desktop, um, Desktop Connector. And it allows you to synchronize your files up in the cloud. So you get versions, you get viewing, you do get to start a discussion and track. Um, there's markup. So it's a way of working. And again, this this is uh, no VPN. You don't have to virtualize. You don't have to set anything up. What you do is you set up your uh, your your machine. This runs on all the popular browsers, um, popular operating systems. Um, and when you work with this, you might actually find that you have other uh, other hubs out there in the screen cap on the right, you can see that you could actually work with, if you're a contractor, different companies. So you could work with them and have different jobs and um, different projects that you're doing in completely different and separate hubs. Next step. So we have a good blog on this. If you are an inventor user and you just need to do something better than Box or Dropbox or Google Drive, the advantage of Fusion Team is it understands CAD files. It understands the dependencies. So no more resolve link errors. And it, it's not just for Inventor anymore, by the way. It's uh, AutoCAD and XREFs and Revit. Uh, it has um, the ability to handle uh, third party files like um, SolidWorks and Creo. So uh, take a look at the, uh, the blog post. It tells you how to set it up, gives you some background, and puts you on the path. And remember, stay tuned to the end of this because we're going to deep dive and show some of this next step all right the aforementioned desktop connector this is the piece that helps you the designer connect with the cloud so if you're using fusion team and you have inventor or an autocad part of um, uh, part of the collection and you need to work the desktop connector is that tool it shows up like a drive so if you use uh, OneDrive or box or dropbox today you know in windows you just throw something in there and it gets synchronized up to the cloud Think that, but much better. Think that, but CAD aware. So it will go in and work with the files up on Fusion Team so you don't have to manually upload to the cloud and download. Next slide. To get this, when you log into your Fusion Team hub for the first time, um, you'll go in and log in, you take a look, and as, if you're part of a hub, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a button that says Install Desktop Connector. That's the utility. It's a quick install. Log in with your Autodesk ID. And before you know it, you'll see inside of Windows Explorer, like a couple slides ago, all of the different locations and, and um, places that you are eligible uh, to work. So, next slide. So, um, within, yeah, go next slide. These are kind of repetitive. There we go. So, Desktop Connector Fusion Team go hand in hand, taking it a step further, talking about Fusion Team and Vault Professional. So, those of you who have Vault Professional, one of the benefits of this platform is the ability to automatically synchronize between Vault Pro and Fusion Team. We synchronize on a time basis or you can do manual push, but the idea there is you have Vault Pro and it's sitting wherever it sits. It could be 
on campus, it could be um, uh, up in the cloud, but you get to choose certain parts of it and synchronize it with uh, Fusion Team. It could be a push, pull, or bi-directional. Next slide. So this takes all of the advantage of Fusion Team that we just talked about earlier, but its intent originally was to uh, to work with people outside of your organization, people you wouldn't normally let behind your firewall into your vault. You can collect uh, a sample, a select project or a job or select uh, data and synchronize it out to Fusion Team. But if you are a remote user right now, it is an option for you to go and synchronize part of your vault. Basically, you carve out um, folders or files or designs and put it out inside of Fusion Team, and now you can work directly. And so this is ideal if you do not have a good VPN solution or a way to uh, otherwise connect to your vault. So next slide. All right, so final final topic in talking about collaboration. Vault, as, we, as we've discussed, is a client server application, but we do have a product called Fusion Lifecycle. And this brings in, um, Fusion Lifecycle runs in uh, completely inside of a, a browser, inside of the cloud. And this brings in and extends the, the value that you have inside of Vault, all of the data that you have inside of there and extends it up into a cloud platform where you can manage the enterprise bill of material, change management that goes beyond engineering. Uh, and this is talking about other applications like problem and um, quality, supplier management, all of those other things that happen after after CAD, after PDM, uh, and sometimes even before. So it allows for, by nature, external and easy collaboration. Next slide. So Autodesk Vault PLM, it, and what you see here is there is an overlap in the middle where we exchange data between the two. So bill of material, change, new product introduction. So there is a an overlap between the design in the world of Vault or PDM and what happens within um, Fusion Lifecycle. Next. I think we'll go to the next slide. So some of these are just to get through and get to the, uh, to the end yep. of, um, yeah. so. Again, so uh, it's another option out there for you. If you if you have Fusion Lifecycle already today, keep in mind this runs uh, completely in the cloud. You can connect it to your vault um, if you want, but if you do have Fusion Lifecycle, this might be the time to actually take a look at some of the other processes that you have within um, and uh, take a look at how you can extend that and use it with the people that you need to collaborate with. Excellent. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you, Brian. Appreciate that uh, high-level overview. So what we're going to do now is uh, Andrew Shaw is going to uh, come on. I think, Anton, you're going to switch over the screen so that Andrew can uh, share his, because I think he's going to be doing a little demonstration for us. So uh, if you would, uh, Andrew, uh, over to you. Thank you very much. Luke, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Excellent. So what I'm going to show you today is a video that was prepared by Andreas, my colleague, who is attending today as well, for Autodesk University last year. And this video with additional information um, can be found on the Autodesk University website. Uh, if you search through the classes, you can find this uh, information. So let's go into it. Basically, what we're going to look at today is a way to collaborate between from inventor to vault to uh, fusion team so the first step obviously is to show you how you sign in to fusion team so you've got the url there fusionteam.autodesk.com and you sign in with your autodesk id so we can see here that Andreas has signed in and you can see various hubs and entering a hub that he prepared, sorry, this video might be a little bit too quick sometimes, entering the hub he prepared for, uh, for the demonstration, he can see various projects that were there. There you go, he had two projects. Then he's going to create an additional project. So he's going to just click on create project, enter any name that is relevant to the project and select an avatar if he wishes to. In this case, we're putting an inventor avatar. Uh, 
and we can now see after we do a quick refresh that the project is there so at the moment obviously the project is empty so what we're going to do we're going to create a few folders where we want to store the data and the first one of the first things you're going to see is that when you sign in to your Autodesk desktop connector I'm just going to pause here um, you will see that the folders are synchronized as Brian said earlier on uh, the desktop connector is a tool which enables you to synchronize data between either your vault or from your Windows Explorer to the cloud and it's not only limited to Fusion team as we can see here we also have access to the BIM 360 ecosystem through BIM 360 teams or BIM 360 docs. So if, if we enter here, we can see that the hub he accessed is visible in the Windows Explorer. And if we open the project, the folder that we created on the web is present now. So now we're going to create a folder locally on our computer in our Windows Explorer. And then obviously, as you, as you would expect, that folder will be present on the cloud as soon as it's synchronized. So now the next step and one of the most important is to invite external people. So Andreas is going to invite Jane in this case. So he typed in an, an email address there, but which is an Autodesk address, but in, in this case, he changed the address afterwards to make sure it was someone external to the company. So the invite has been sent. We can see that as project members, we can now see Jane Doe. And then we can see that when Jen, Jane connects to the Fusion environment, they can see the project that Andreas created on the cloud with the various folders. Again, folders empty for the time being, but that's going to change very soon. So in this case, Jane is going to install the desktop connector. She has installed it. In, and here you can see the difference between Andreas and Jane, where Andreas could see BIM 360 because he has access to various hubs in BIM 360. In this case, Jane, having only access to Fusion Team, can only see a Fusion drive in her Windows Explorer. So in this case, Jane is um, pausing the desktop connector, and the reason why she wants to work offline is she wants to be able to put all the files in one go through inventor of differently without having to um, have the um how could i say without i'm just going to pause this so the video doesn't go too fast without um, um overloading if you want the um the process Oh, sorry, I think I've gone too far. Let me go back to where I was. My apologies. I think we've done this. Yes, okay. Okay, so as I said, we're working offline here and the next step is that Jane is going to put files, in this case inventor files, into the um, Fusion Team drive locally. So she's already put her inventor project and when she works, opens the workspace for designer folder, we can see all the files that she has put in there using inventor she hasn't put anything in the content center but 
we could assume that she could also put parts into the content center folder. Those folders were obviously mapped in Inventor. So now we're going to show you the Inventor part. So you can see already now that there is a, a few information. So we are logged in as Jane. We are not logged in as Andreas. So we're logged in as an, an external user, someone who is not part of your company. So she, the first, now she's going to select the relevant project. We're going to show you that once the project is selected, we can see that in the workspace, the folders that were mapped. So those folders are the folders that are in the virtual drive created by the desktop connector. Now Jane is going to open a file, which is in that folder. So she's opening an assembly, just to make sure that she has full access to those files, which is the case. And once she she's happy with the file has been correctly put in that folder. What we're going to do is we're going to re-enable the desktop connector to synchronize the files that we put in the local folder to the cloud. So we'll untick work offline. Now she's just going to check to make sure that it is connecting and you will see that by right-clicking on it, it's going online. And then you can see the various pending jobs, pending synchronization jobs. So by right clicking, you can go to pending actions and you will see all the files that are being currently uploaded to the cloud. There you go. So going back to the cloud, Infusion team, just to make sure that the, the files are there, we can Obviously, we can check first thing if the files are still correctly in the uh, local folder, which they should be because we haven't deleted them. But then going to the cloud, oh no, that, that's a good point. We can also check the version. In this case, it's the first version, the first time the files are uploaded to the cloud, so they are version one. And we can see that the files are currently uploaded to Fusion Team. They get as an owner, the person who has uploaded them first, in this case, it's Jane. And you can see that all the files are currently in version one. We're going to open the assembly in Fusion Team to view it, make sure that we can see here what that assembly uses. And then we switch back to Andreas being connected to Fusion Team to make sure that he can see the files that Jane uploaded, which is the case as well. So then the next step in terms of organizing your work is to make sure that you um, create a folder structure which will enable you to control easily who has access to what, where do the files come from, and separate the files that you are bringing in from the cloud to the files that your engineers are work on internally on the, in the company. So in this case, Andreas is going to log to Vault, make sure that all the folders, the relevant folders have been created.
and then we're going to set up the mapping between the vault folders and the cloud folders. So for that, we go into the vault settings, into the collaborate tab, and into the configuration of the project sync. Create a new coll collaborate, um, a new mapping, give it a name, select the vault folder that you want to share. and then select the cloud drive folder that you going to want to share. And I'm just going to pause here. As you can see, this is what I was talking about earlier on. When you want to create a synchronization from Vault, you will see all the drives and all the hubs that um, the desktop connector gives you access to from this tool. So you could very well also say, well, for some specific folders in Vault, I want to share my files with Fusion team users because they are manufacturing files. For other folders in Vault which contain uh, architectural files, I want to share them with my users in, of the BIM 360 Docs environment. So let's continue this video. So we're going to select PS003, which was the for the, the project that Andreas created for this. We can enable manual synchronization as well. But in this case, what Andreas is going to do is he's going to create a schedule for the synchronization. So he selects the folder he wants to synchronize, how he wants to synchronize it. It can be a simple download, it can be bi-directional. And then it's going to select the schedule. It can be every day at a specific time, every X amount of hours. In this case, it's just going to leave it to eight hours. No, not even, it's going to change it to midnight. And in here, I'm just going to pause it very quickly because otherwise it will disappear. Uh, in here, you can also add um, filters. So you can say only download files which have this or that extension, or only download files that have been created by this user, or any property, nearly any property that is in Vault, that is part of the CAD file, can be used as a condition filter. Okay, now the selection has been done. And we can see that what actually takes care of the synchronization between um, Vault and the, uh, and the cloud is the job processor in Vault. So in here we can see that it's transferring files from Fusion team to Vault Professional. And if we refresh, all the files that were on the cloud have been synchronized to the Vault and are now available to all Vault users we have, which have the relevant access rights and we can see in the comment that this file was downloaded from the cloud drive. And you can see also that all the files are currently in version one. And that's important because what you're going to see next is uh, a change of a file and what impact it has in the Vault environment. So in this case, we're back with Jane in her inventor environment. She's opening the assembly and Jane is going to make a little change to the drawing
Okay. So it was they were all on version one, and when she did the refresh, you can see that the assembly and the I part, so the heat ring that she modified, have are now in version two. And once the synchronization has happened, you can see that both parts are in the Fusion Team site are also on version two. Again, synchronizing the files with the Vault environment will bring in the version two of the file into your Vault environment. And you can see in the history, the two versions and both versions being downloaded from the cloud. So in this case, Andreas is making a change to the drawing and is using one of the files which was created and brought in from the cloud. And this shows you in which way you can collaborate with externals, which might be uh, specifically drawing some parts of your machinery. So I'm not going to go too much into details about using constraints and so on in Inventor, because I think the collaboration part is, is a bit more important. But I think it, this highlights the fact that it is extremely easy to collaborate with externals on CAD files. And as Brian was saying, keeping the intelligence of the CAD files with externals, with people who are not usually, who do not have access to your vault environment. And that's it for my part. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate you showing that off. Um... I think that really highlights, um, you know, once you get things set up, it's actually super easy uh, to collaborate. So thank you again for highlighting that uh, Vault and Project Sync workflow. So what we wanted to do now is we wanted to uh, do a little bit of uh, Q&A. Uh, there were a couple of questions uh, that came in. Let me, let me share my screen so you can uh, at least see the cool Q&A icons that we've made. Um, so a um, couple questions that came in, and I'm just going to call on a handful of our um, uh, of our presenters today. So uh, one of the first questions uh, that that came in, and Brian, I'm going to ask this one to you. It's kind of a two part question, uh, and it looks okay. like you answered it, but I wanted to make sure that for the group, it, it was the question about uh, the differences between Fusion Team uh, and Fusion 360, and then a follow up would be. Um, kind of the the access, like who has it normally? And then obviously we know about extended access. So if you could answer that kind of two part question, that'd be great. All right, thanks. Uh, common question, Fusion Team is technically the hub. So when uh, Andrew was showing uh, the website and you could see the, the the CAD files and a grid layout and you could you could view them, Fusion Team is, the, is a hub, it's a site where you go and you collaborate. And it's um, not just for Inventor, or, or Fusion or, or anything, you can put a variety. In fact, uh, there's a link that we have out there. There's um, over 50 different file formats that it can see and read, render out. So Fusion Team is the place that you put everything. Think of it like a, a, a data management, if you will, um, up uh, but in the cloud. Fusion 360, however, is the design tool. And, it's, and just to call it a design tool is to do a disservice. Fusion 360 is, yes, design, but it's also machining, and it's also analysis, and it's also generative, and it's also everything. That, that That's your design tool. So Fusion 360 is where you do your modeling and your drawings and um, the, the design itself. But where it stores, Fusion 360 uses Fusion Team as a, as a data management 
as a PDM. So that's where the files go. So when you're using Fusion 360 and you want to go and uh, collaborate on files and look at things, you actually can go to Fusion Team and see the Fusion 360 files. So I hope that starts to, I, I know that, you know, we're all on the inside, right? So we, we have all these words on the outside. I hope that adds a little bit of clarity as to what these what these do because we like to uh like to name things um and it can cause a little bit of like a conf confusion now who has access so fusion team fusion team and fusion 360 are first both part of the extended access program so if you are looking to get going you have some time you want to do some extended learning maybe you are looking to branch out this is a good time to branch out and sharpen your skills in a new uh, and go after maybe a different market, both Fusion 360 and Fusion Team are there for you. So I'd, I'd encourage you to go get your hands on this because until the, the end of May, you can just have it for commercial use. If you need to do quick drawings, quick renderings, quick um, anything that, that you need to, to work with, um, take a look at the, the CNC and the, the CAM part of it. That's there for, with Fusion 360 and then by nature, Fusion Team goes with it. If you are a product design and manufacturing collection or what we call the collection if you're a customer uh, that has subscription to the collection you have this already so if you are a contract owner cad manager uh, vault manager uh, take a look at what you have in your portal uh, at the beginning of this presentation we went through uh, and, and showed like how you can access it you might be surprised you might have it already and that's great so that's uh, that's your homework for the week is take a look at what you have entitlement to because you probably you know you might have it already so um, hope that answers the question. Perfect. Thank you, Brian. Uh, next one, a Andrew, uh, this, this is a question for you. I, I think you may have showed this, um, but the question came in about uh, when you have your vault uh, cloud mapping set up, do you have to map all the folders individually, Andrew? I I'm not sure if you know the answer to that one. Um, yes, you do need to map all the, what do you mean by mapping individually? So this, the main folders have to be mapped you have to create each mapping if you want okay. manually. Okay. Yeah, I think that was the question. The, the, okay. the, it was it was pretty straightforward. Uh, the the next one, uh, Anton, if you don't mind answering this one, I think you uh, may have answered it in the chat, but there was a question. Uh, I think it was Anton. Uh, it was the question about shared views and when shared views uh, became available because you know a lot of folks using software might not be using the most current version. At least I think that was Andrew. Uh, of when shared views became available. Um, no, that was Jason that answered that. Jason, you mind answering uh, that question about when shared views uh, started? Yeah, hi. Uh, so we introduced shared views, I believe it was in the 2019 release. So it's been out uh, a few years now. And that was pretty much across multiple products, correct? Because I'm pretty sure Inventor was right around that same time as well. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, okay, perfect, thank you. A um, couple more questions. Um, let's see here, let's see here. Um, Brian, back to you. Uh, is Fusion Team purchasable outside of Fusion 360? Yes, it is. You can go to the Fusion Team site and you can purchase, I believe it's called Fusion Team Participant. And yes, you can purchase seats of it that are straight up and legit. And that, uh, of course, you, that adds in other people. So if you have people that are on the outside of your organization that you just need to uh, have them see the files, maybe download the files, it's perfect for that. So yeah, you can add perfect. seats. Uh, and uh, Andreas, I'm gonna ask you to uh, answer that question uh, uh, that you just answered in the chat. Uh, the question is, uh, can Fusion Team also be used uh, for cloud storage for Inventor? And I, and I think you gave a good answer there if you don't mind sharing with the whole group. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, um, it, it depends definitely on your needs. Fusion Team, I mean, works like OneDrive or Google Drive, and you can store data, you can share data. If you think Fusion Team is good for your collaboration work, then please go ahead. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, uh, another question came up, and I'll, I'll take this one. This one was uh, about shared views and like training and workflows and kind of understanding that a little bit better. Uh, so th there's multiple resources for uh, for shared views. Uh, if you if you literally just Google uh, Autodesk shared views or Inventor shared views, you're going to get directed to the most recent YouTube videos. Uh, there's also some AKN articles. 
but essentially, you know, shared views are probably the easiest way to collaborate. And, you know, in Canvas, uh, like Brian had mentioned, uh, you share the view. It is a, a totally viewable file that you can look at pretty much on any device and you can choose what they can do. So can they measure, can they explode, can they slice? So you have access to choose what you allow the individuals to do that see that file. Uh, the default expiration date is 30 days. So these files don't kind of float out uh, in the interwebs forever. Uh, they do eventually expire. But when people make comments or people uh, add um, you know, markups or anything like that, that all comes back to a central location. And it's super intuitive. Um, it, it, it doesn't cost you anything to, to make a shared view. So if you have Inventor, uh, or you have AutoCAD or you're running Vault and you've never messed with shared views, um, you can j just go in and, and, and test it out. Uh, it's actually a really, really slick way, uh, even if you're not working from home, if, if you know, w when all of this, you know, work from home stuff blows over and you're back in the office, shared views is a great way uh, to send something to, you know, your manager who isn't maybe, you know, a tech savvy person, doesn't run Inventor, but you need them to make a comment. It, it's a great way to get them uh, to do that. And correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, uh, we can do some automatic shared view creation right out of Vault, right, for collaboration. Yeah, so Vault uh, has a shared view a panel that shows up, and it's actually a, a preferred way to do it because Vault is where you're managing, you're thinking about the design, and you're thinking about, oh, I, I need some, I just need some sign-off and approval or that gut feel. You do that from within Vault. And it's it's actually part of that that file. So there's a correspondence and a history, much like if you've ever had to you know stop, send an email, then you save that email off for some you know because you want to have a history of the discussion. Um, let that live in Vault. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we're just about uh, out of time. I just want to do a quick wrap up here for everybody that still decided to hang out with us. So make sure you check out your Autodesk account. This is the best way uh, to get. Uh, access to your software. Uh, make sure you check out the extended access program. Uh, this is a great way to have access to some of this cloud collaboration functionality that you saw here today. Uh, make sure you reach out to your 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 your, your VARs, uh, your resellers, who you purchased your software from. Uh, they're all um, you know in this as well. A lot of the content that we're sharing, we're sharing with them. Uh, they've, you know, they understand how to implement some of these things. Uh, they are all still working. So make sure that you uh, reach out to your reseller. Um, as usual, you can always reach out to Autodesk support. We had, you know, a, a ton of support folks uh, in the background answering calls uh, on this webinar and previous ones. Uh, those folks uh, are there to help you uh, and, and have been super responsive. Uh, and then if you have any questions specifically or anything related to uh, uh, just in general at a high level, we do have our, uh, our COVID-19 resource page that kind of collects everything across multiple products. So if you're running things other than just manufacturing tools, if you're running other things, uh, there's lots of resources that cover virtually every uh, Autodesk product. So uh, we appreciate everybody's time. Uh, please make sure that you share the, the links to this webinar. And there, we have one more coming next Tuesday, give you another opportunity uh, to reach out uh, and ask us some questions. Uh, but share it with your coworkers, your system administrators, your CAD admins, whoever you think would benefit uh, from, uh, from this webinar. And, and thank you uh, for your time and attention. Uh, and stay safe and make sure you wash your hands. Have a good day.